we're going to create some new formulas, formulas that will allow us to expand out trig functions. They're what known as the uh, compound angle formulas. So we'll start off with our unit circle. So there it is, our unit circle radius one on our axis. And I'm going to label a point there P and give it some coordinates. The coordinates will be with reference to the angle that it makes with the positive x axis. And so a little bit of trig, we can work out that the x value will end up being the cosine of beta and the y value will end up being the sine of beta. So our coordinates are cos beta, sine beta. I'm now going to pick a point over there in the, the second quadrant. I mean, it doesn't really matter that it's in the second quadrant. That's just where I've put it. It would have the same coordinates, but in reference to a different angle. And let's call that angle alpha. So we've rotated around the circle, alpha degrees or radians, whatever you're using as your angular measure. So Q would be the point cos alpha, sine alpha. And you might be looking at that and thinking, well, hang on a sec, surely the X value is negative. But remember, the angle we're dealing with here, alpha, is obtuse. And the cosine of an obtuse number is negative. So cos alpha is actually a negative number. So that's fine. Okay, let's join those two points up, PQ. Now, what I'm interested in is finding the length of that green line. I can use the cosine rule. So PQ squared would be one squared plus one squared minus two times one times one times the cosine. Now, the angle in that triangle would be the difference between alpha and beta. So alpha minus beta. Tidying that up, I get the PQ squared is two minus two cos alpha minus beta. That's one way I could have found PQ. Of course, I could have used coordinate geometry and the distance formula. So PQ squared in this case would be the difference in the X value squared plus the difference in the Y value squared. Expanding that all out, and uh, we notice something. We've got some cos squareds plus sine squareds there. Well, we know from our trig identity that cos squared plus sine squared is actually one. So all of that tidies up to be two minus two cos alpha cos beta minus two sine alpha sine beta. But hang on a sec. They're both equal to PQ squared. So therefore they must be the same thing. So two minus two cos alpha minus beta is the same as two minus two cos alpha cos beta minus two sine alpha sine beta. And playing around with that, we get the first of our compound angular formulas. Cos alpha minus cos beta is equal to cos alpha cos beta plus sine alpha sine beta. So what we can see from this is it's not as simple as just saying, well, I'll expand out the parentheses and we get cos alpha minus cos beta. That doesn't work. We have to use this compound angle formula. I'm going to find the next formula by replacing beta with negative beta in the one that we just worked out. So it will become cos alpha plus beta. But that'll be cos alpha cos negative beta plus sine alpha sine negative beta. But if I play around with the properties of odd and even functions, well, cosine's an even function. So function negative x is equal to function x. And sine is an odd function. So function negative x is negative function x. Substituting in, we get that cos alpha plus beta is cos alpha cos beta minus sine alpha sine beta. Now, obviously, they're very similar formulas. The difference is the, the signs. So I could think of it this way. Cos of alpha plus or minus beta is the cos of alpha cos of beta minus plus sine alpha sine beta. Notice that the sine is different. So if it's plus minus, then it becomes minus plus. Well, there's another way I remember that. I say, well, hang on, if I've got cos of alpha plus or minus beta, then I know the pattern goes cos, cos, sine, sine. Okay, so there's that pattern. Cos, cos, sine, sine. And then I say, well, if it's not the sine, because it's not the sine ratio we're dealing with here, it's the cosine ratio, then it's not the sine. So I'll change the sine from a plus minus to a minus plus. So cos, cos, sine, sine. If it's not the sine, it's not the sine. 
Now let's create another formula. So going back to our original formula, and I'm going to replace alpha with 90 minus alpha this time. So we get cos 90 minus alpha minus beta is cos 90 minus alpha cos beta plus sine 90 minus alpha sine beta. Cos 90 minus alpha minus beta, I'm just going to factorize the negative out of the alpha and beta there. So cos of 90 minus alpha plus beta. And now I'm going to use complementary ratios. So cos of 90 minus is sine and sine of 90 minus is cos. So I end up with sine of alpha plus beta, is sine of alpha, cos of beta, plus cos of alpha, sine of beta. Now in this new one that I've just created, I'm going to replace beta with minus beta. Let's see what happens there. So sine of alpha minus beta, sine of alpha cos minus beta, plus cos alpha sine minus beta. Once again, we'll play around with the properties of odd and even functions. And we come up with this one. Sine of alpha minus beta is equal to sine alpha cos beta minus cos alpha sine beta. Again, very similar formulas. The only difference is the sine. But this time you'll notice it's the same sign. So the first one, alpha plus beta, I ended up with plus. The second one, alpha minus beta, I ended up with minus. So sine of alpha plus or minus beta is sine alpha cos beta plus or minus cos alpha sine beta. But how I remember this one is the pattern again. It goes sine cos cos sine. This time, if it is the sine ratio, then the sine is the same. So if it is the sine, it's the sine. So if it's the sine, it's the sine. Let's create tan of alpha plus beta now. Remember our relationship, tan is sine on cos. And we've created formulas for sine of alpha plus beta, cos of alpha plus beta. So on the top of the fraction goes sine cos cos sine. If it's the sine, it's the sine. And on the bottom of the fraction goes cos cos sine sine. If it's not the sine, it's not the sine. I'm going to simplify this by making it look more complicated. What? What I mean by that is I'm going to divide everything by cos alpha cos beta. And I've ended up with something which looks far more complicated until you notice a whole lot of cancelling will now happen. Remember, sine on cos is 10. So the first bit there, sine alpha cos beta on cos alpha cos beta, the coses cancel, sine on cos, tan alpha. In the next one, similar thing happens. The cos alphas cancel, sine on cos, tan beta. Then we go to the bottom of the fraction. All the coses cancel, 1 minus sine sine on cos cos, tan tan. So tan alpha plus beta is tan alpha plus tan beta on 1 minus tan alpha tan beta. Well, now, once again, we're going to replace beta with minus beta. So tan alpha minus beta, tan alpha plus tan minus beta on 1 minus tan alpha tan minus beta. Tan is an odd function. So I can replace tan and minus beta with minus tan beta. And we get that the tan of alpha minus beta, tan alpha minus tan beta on 1 plus tan alpha tan beta. So how do I remember this one? I think of it just as the positive one. And I know the positive one goes tan plus tan on 1 minus tan tan. So tan plus tan on 1 minus tan tan. And if it's the negative one, then the signs just change. So the top of the fraction is the same as what we're doing. The bottom of the fraction is different to what we're doing. All right, well, let's summarize all of those compound angle formulas. Sine, sine cos cos sine. If it's the sine, it's the sine. So the plus minus stays as plus minus. Cos, cos cos sine sine. If it's not the sine, it's not the sine. Now, how do I remember the pattern? On those ones, you start with what you're doing. So you'll notice the sine one starts with sine. The cosine one starts with cosine. The other thing to remember, whenever you say cos, you say cos again. So you always say cos cos. Therefore, when I go sine, I start with a sine. So I go sine cos. Oh, I've said cos, so I'll say cos again. So sine cos cos, and that just leaves me with sine. So sine, cos, cos, sine. With cos, start with cos. Whenever I say cos, I'll say cos again. So cos, cos, 
But now that just leaves me with sine, sine. Sine, cos, cos, sine. If it's the sine, it's the sine. Cos, cos, sine, sine. If it's not the sine, it's not the sine. Tan, again, we start with what we're doing. So tan, but everything's tan in this one. So I just remember it as tan plus tan on one minus tan, tan. Now I might sound crazy doing it that way, but after a while, it'll get stuck in your head. Let's look at an example. Ah, it's cos, cos of two alpha minus three beta. Well, that goes to cos, cos, sine, sine. If it's not the sine, it's not the sine. So the minus is a plus. Cos two alpha, cos three beta, plus sine two alpha, sine three beta. Simplify this one. Well, this is actually using the tan one in reverse because have a look, the pattern's there. Tan plus tan on one minus tan, tan. So it must have been tan of 20 plus 10, which is tan 30. And we know that to be one on root three. Find the exact value of sine 15. So this is where they become very useful. We have exact values for 30, 45, 60, and all the boundary angles. So how can we create 15 out of all that? Well, there's more than one way, but the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to say 15 is 45 minus 30. Now, other ways you could have done it. You could have said 60 minus 45, for instance. It should give you the same answer. It's however you choose to do it. So sine 45 minus 30. Well, sine, sine cos cos sine, if it's the sine, it's the sine. So minus stays as minus. Sine 45 cos 30 minus cos 45 sine 30. Substitute in our exact values that we know, tidying it all up, we've got a common denominator of 2 root 2, and we get root 3 minus 1 over 2 root 2. All right, they're telling us that sine alpha is 2 thirds and cos beta is a quarter, we have to find the sine of alpha plus beta. We do not need to go and find the size of the angles alpha and beta. What I do is just draw up a triangle for each of them. Remember, alpha and beta are not necessarily in the same triangle. So we draw up triangles for each of them. So for alpha, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So the third side, root five. For the cosine, Adjacent over hypotenuse, Pythagoras gives us opposite, root 15. So now I can substitute into our sine formula. Sine of alpha plus beta. Sine cos, cos sine. If it's the sine, it's the sine. Substitute in those ratios, reading off our triangles. Pull it all together into one fraction, common denominator of 12. 2 plus 5 root 3 over 12. The tan of the inverse sine of two thirds plus the inverse cos of one quarter. Recall that the inverse sine and the inverse cos, all of those inverse trig functions are actually angles. So why don't I just call inverse sine of two thirds alpha? So alpha is the inverse sine of two thirds. I'll draw up a triangle for it. So one of those angles will be alpha and uh, sine ratio opposite over hypotenuse. Pythagoras gives me root five. I'll let beta be the inverse cos of a quarter and draw up a triangle for that one. Make beta one of the angles. Adjacent over hypotenuse, one over four. Pythagoras, root 15. So now what I'm solving is tan of alpha plus beta, which is tan plus tan on one minus tan tan. Reading off the triangles, substituting in those ratios. Ooh, a bit of manipulation here. Fractions on fractions. Don't like those. So first thing I'm going to do is put everything over the square root of 5. The denominators end up cancelling. 2 plus 5 root 3 on root 5 minus 2 root 15. I'm not going to bother rationalising the denominator on something like that. I'll leave it like that. It's an exact value. It's fine. So 17d, we're playing with the compound angle. So remember the three ratios. The sine is sine cos cos sine. If it's the sine, it's the sine. Cosine, cos, cos, sine, sine. If it's not the sine, it's not the sine. And tan, tan plus tan on one minus tan, tan.